everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am assembling the Estes Outlaw model rocket. Now this is advertised as ready to fly. It's actually almost ready to fly. We have to do a little bit of work on the parachute and putting it together. But this whole thing will take less than 15 minutes. Inside the box the rocket is packaged with an excess of plastic here. So when you cut this open be careful not to cut things like this shock cord here that's already attached to the model. Alright, so we do have the parachute here that we'll have to quickly assemble. And we'll take a look here on our instructions and make sure there's nothing else. Yep, that's about it. Put the parachute on. Now, if you notice here on mine though, the decals have already been applied and might have bubbled up a lot. Now, unfortunately, yeah, see if you try and lift those up, um, it tends to lift the paper with it. And so you can either just leave it alone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press it down and just have a wrinkle or two there. Uh, as if you have those big lifted up buffles like bubbles like that, um, they will attract dirt and it's at least from a distance you can you can't see the little crinkles there as well. I'm going to do that all the way around and just kind of press everything down. And just try and work the bubbles out as best that you can. Okay, now this one is basically just advertisement. Let me see if I can... It too is bubbled. Now there's another one under this which acts as a reinforcement for the launch lug. And that's not going to come out either. So we'll just go ahead and press it down as best we can. Okay, so over here we've got the shock cord already tied on to the reducer here. Um, up here on this decal, we'll go ahead and squish it down as well. Alright, that nose cone is permanently mounted, which is too bad. They could have made a payloader out of this. Okay, um, one thing I will do here, just as a little safety precaution, is to add just a little drop of glue to this knot to make sure it doesn't come unraveled. It doesn't take much. Okay, so just a little bit of glue there. Um, and if this is really long here, you might want to cut that off so it doesn't get caught between the shoulder and the body tube. That looks pretty good though. Alright, so I'll put that aside for just a moment. To do the parachute, just open this up. And there are two ways we can do this. One is to simply tie it to the nose cone like the instructions suggest. The other is to use a snap swivel that you can get in the fishing departments of hardware or sporting goods stores, like this. Now if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like to use these for parachutes. Um, regardless of which one you use, first we just need to unfold and untangle the parachute and shroud lines. Okay, I'm going to gather these all on a finger like this. And then I'm going to grab the middle of the parachute sheet. And then we're just going to pull everything taut here. Okay, now this should have everything coming together. So all these corners should be at roughly the same spot. Alright, and all those shroud lines should be the same length. Now you may notice there, mine aren't. Okay, so it's really hard to change these without having to cut them and put them back together. Um, it, it's not that much different that I'm going to worry about it. Okay, but if you want to, you can cut these and resize them. Uh, you can also uh, grab everything here from the corners get all those corners aligned and then bring these shroud lines down together without letting go 
Okay, and you can see where some of the loops are bigger than others. And actually that's, when I do it that way, it's not too bad. So I'm not going to worry about them there. I do need to get them all back together again. Okay, so once more, holding all those shroud lines there. Now, if you just want to attach this to the eyelet here, what you'll need to do is pass those three loops through it. Okay, and then open them all up again. Like that. And then you're going to pass the entire parachute through these loops and then pull it tight. Now I'm not going to do that because I want to use the snap swivel on mine. Okay, so one more time we're going to gather all these together. Okay, and now... Alright, so our snap swivel here has a swivel end with a, a circular eyelet and then the snap connector end down here. So we're going to pass our loops through that circular eyelet. Get all of them through there. Okay, so now I've got my loops on the right, snap swivel here. I'm going to take that snap swivel and push it up through the loops and then pull the loops downward like this and then I'm just going to tighten it up and it's going to form a knot here on the swivel end. Okay, And if that's the way you want it there then go ahead and take a little drop of glue again and just work it into the knot and that will keep it from coming undone. Right, and then we just clip this on to the reducer there. Okay. <clears throat> now, when choosing a snap swivel, the main thing you need to watch for is that the snap part has to be able to move freely here. If it binds up, it may get stuck kind of sideways, which could prevent the recovery system from deploying properly. Okay. When you're ready to launch, simply Stuff some wadding down in there. You'll probably need about five squares worth, maybe six. Fold your parachute up using your favorite method. Okay, put that shock cord down inside. Followed by the parachute. All the remaining things there. Now make sure you don't get shock cord or parachute pieces stuck in between the reducer and the tube like mine's trying to do there. Okay, slide that down. Give it a shake test. All right, so that should not come out on its own. If it does, you can add a little bit of masking tape here to increase the friction. If it's really tight and it won't come loose very well at all, um, again, make sure you don't have the shock cord caught. That's usually the problem. Um, but if it's still just really tight, take some fine sandpaper and you can sand the shoulder around here just a little bit at a time. All right? Otherwise, it just needs a motor in that end and it's ready to fly. So that was really easy to do. Have a great flight, have a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.